Now, while it is true that science is being badly attacked, severely attacked, in regard to genetically engineered foods, the attack on science in regard to GMOs is very different, diametrically different, than the attack on science in regard to climate change. In, when it comes to climate change, the attack on science is coming from outside the scientific community. But in the case of GMOs, the attack on science is coming from inside the scientific community. It's an inside job that's especially insidious, and that's because it's being waged. The key people waging it are actually part of the scientific community, and they are acting under the banner of science. My book, Altered Genes, Twisted Truth, um, solidly documents this assault on science, this inside assault on science. An assault on science, probably one of the worst that's ever occurred in the name of science. And it documents there's been systematic twisting of the truth. So the part of that twisting, the deception, is that the process of creating GE foods, and sometimes they'll be referred to as GM foods, so GE stands for genetically engineered, GM stands for genetically modified, not the car manufacturer. Uh, the process of creating GE foods has been deceptively described to make it appear much more precise and far less disruptive than it actually is. Concomitantly, natural processes have been falsely described to make them look less precise and more disruptive than they actually are. So, by misrepresenting the GE process as precise, precise and predictable, while portraying natural processes as unnaturally random and unruly, many scientists have induced the false impression that genetic engineering is natural and innocuous. Very false impression. Further, as in further twisting of the truth, False statements have consistently been issued about the tests on genetically engineered foods to cover up the substantial troubling results. What's more, the evidence that demonstrates the distortion of the evidence is solid, and its solidity has been attested by many experts. And the... Uh, my book presents a large amount of this evidence, and the presentation in the book has been praised by many experts. Uh, one of them is John Eichard, Professor Emeritus of Agricultural and Applied Economics at the University of Missouri. He stated about the book, the evidence is comprehensive and irrefutable. No one has documented other cases of irresponsible behavior by government, regulators, and the scientific establishment nearly as well as Drucker documents this one. Another expert who has praised the book is David Schubert, a professor at the Salk Institute for Biological Science, Biological Studies, and the head of cellular, cellular neurobiology there. And uh, he stated that the book is scientifically solid and truly outstanding, and through its masterful marshalling of facts, it dispels the cloud of disinformation that has misled people into believing that GE foods have been adequately tested and don't entail abnormal risks. Now, the irrefutable fact that the facts have been routinely misrepresented is in itself concrete evidence evidence of how strongly the evidence weighs against the soundness of the GE food venture. Because, after all, it's quite obvious, if the facts are on your side, you're proud of them. You don't want to hide them. You don't want to distort them. You want to bring them out. You want to bring them out in their fullness. It's only when the evidence weighs against your position that you would be tempted to use underhanded means 
to suppress evidence, to misrepresent evidence. And unfortunately, the fact, the very fact, that the proponents of genetically engineered foods have been driven to distort the facts so extensively, really be, be, since the creation of the first GMO organism, genetically engineered organism, back in the early 1970s, years before, almost a decade before, the technology was able to create the first functional genetically engineered plant, the facts have been misrepresented by eminent scientists and scientific institutions. In fact, the misrepresentations predated the founding of the biotechnology industry. Okay? So as my book demonstrates, although many people, when they hear about the distortions uh, and deceptions that are uh, propagated on behalf of GMOs, they think of Monsanto or DuPont or the other major multinational corporations that manufacture them. And clearly, uh, those multinationals have, have uh, been guilty of, uh, of many distortions, but they probably wouldn't have invested the millions and millions in developing genetically engineered foods in the first place if the groundwork had not been laid, if the public had not been properly uh, uh, pacified about these, and, and the governments had been also induced to have a promotional policy by misrepresentations that were propagated by, the, by eminent uh, constituents of the scientific establishment. It's very important to understand. So the key deceptions have been disseminated by individuals and organizations operating in the name of science under the banner of science. And they're probably, most of them, not even aware of the extent to which they have been disfiguring the facts. And for one thing, they pretty much talk to one another. And as we know, if a untruth is repeated often enough, and one hears it back from one's peers, one starts to believe it oneself. There's a lot of self-deception that's been going on. And uh, unfortunately, not just self-deception, but deception of government regulators, of the media, and the public.